There we go. There it is. And we are talking, and you guys, I won't look th like this the entire time. I'm going to be over here. But I'm, I have Twitter up. Can you guys hear me okay? Oh yeah, 30 seconds. I have been saying something. Can you guys hear me? I see the microphone. It's a 30 second lag. Can you hear me okay, Rosemary? It's on the highest setting for the microphone for me. All right, cool. Thanks, Rosemary. All righty. Today we will finish up the fantasy dress. Those of you who saw it last week, reminding everyone that that um, the image on the cover was rendered after that, so it'll look a little different. Um, let me open that file while we are waiting. Open project. It was a quick and dirty render. <laughs> I didn't even light it. <laughs> Don't tell anybody, she says, um, a recorded live stream. Don't tell no one. <laughs> Where's my mouse? Okay, there it is. Okay, uh, that's working well. I'm gonna close that. Keep Discord up for a little bit in case people have questions. The audio seems to be working for Rosemary, so Allie, you might want to check your volume. Keeping it at mono. <laughs> oh, now it's working. Okay. I did nothing. Sometimes I'm just not talking. Um, let me make sure here. All oh, these are off. Yeah. All right. So in about four minutes, um, we will move on. I'll pull up the references. Open. Image. Not that one. So. I'll do my spiel in the three in three minutes and then we'll start actually making the rest of the dress, which will be some sleeves and or a sleeve and a cape. Yes, the mic is working. I have no other audio playing. Mind you, 30 second lag. But I will check it on my phone. And I'm just, oh wow, you guys can hear my keyboard. <laughs> mm -hmm. I forget how clacky my keyboard is. I am sorry to everybody about that, but um, you guys are just going to suffer that, those keyboard noises for all eternity. Okay. So, 
we're going to be doing probably, uh, I really like the two, there's two sleeve styles that I really like that the Discord ch chat kind of wanted to see. And like, I can probably get away with making one of them that's like a cape and making it really sheer. And then the other one can be like the actual dress sleeve. Because we're just going to make this as busy as possible. Mm -hmm. Because why not? Thank you. I cut it myself, Mona. So we're going to make this thing as busy as possible that you will never, ever want to to rent, to not simulate it, but you'll never want to actually animate this thing. All right. Nine minutes. We have one minute. One minute left, and then I can do the quick spiel because the links are in the video now. Everyone jumps in, and then they leave because I always do the 10-minute 10 10 minute buffer. I'm like, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for that 10 minutes. So that everyone can see it because I did, I am doing announcements now on Twitter and on like Facebook. So hopefully people will see it because I've seen some complaints that they aren't seeing our announcements. <laughs> Your go yours goes crazy, Rosemary. Mine is just, it helps that I bleach it. I'll be honest. Okay, it's 1210. For those of you, oh, eight minutes, who don't know, I am Megan and I am a trainer community manager with Marvelous Designer and I am the one who streams the most. So in the YouTube description, um, I guess I'll, I'll quickly spam them here. We have all of our links and I'm gonna quickly spam them down here. I have a link to the Discord where a lot of people are picking and choosing and voting on what we're streaming this time. We are continuing to stream from last week, but sometimes we will vote. Um, and a link to our website for those of you in the future who are seeing this. The channel is called Marvelous Designer. So is the software. If you ask me what the software we, I am using, I'm using Marvelous Designer. And I'm not leaving Marvelous Designer. And then for those of you who are on our Twitch channel, we do let the Twitch uh, video expire after the 14 days. We are not a Twitch partner. But we do on our YouTube channel, we do keep these videos in perpetuity so that you can come back and use them as reference. Because these are great learning opportunities to see someone working as working uh, live, sometimes without a plan. Um, and you can see troubleshooting and how I, I do my troubleshooting and saying I would ra I should have done it this way had I originally known exactly what I wanted. So it's a good reference tool for everybody. And for those of you who are brand new to Marvelous Designer, another link uh, below that is the beginner tutorials. I do recommend following our beginner tutorials for best practices so that you can get started working in Marvelous Designer off on the best foot. I do recommend at least watching some of our tutorials um, just for best practices and um, to kind of walk before you run. And last but not least, um, here is a link to our support, like little support ticket website. If you're having technical difficulties and it might just be a um, like a bug, if you're worried about it being a bug, if you can't get into your uh, account or you're, you can't log in for some reason on the actual computer, feel free to submit a support ticket through the support contact because it's a little faster than submitting a support email. So now that I've done my spiel, the links are also going to just be in the YouTube description and then I will update the Twitch description later. Uh, C4D, I need to uh, convince my co convince the office I can get C4D. <laughs> uh, but we do actually have some options with uh, our sister software for uh, some walking cycle animations. But let's go ahead and finish this dress that will never have a walking cycle animation, she says, probably having to add a walking cycle animation at some point in the future because she said it. So this is what we made last time. This is not what the render looks like because I have had a comment on the YouTube channel claiming that this was not what I made, that something was not what we made 
during a stream and it but it was it's just because we do render it on the side i will open an image here just so you can see the difference just because someone has said that i'm going to show it here this is what it looks like rendered in v-ray this was a quick and dirty v-ray render obviously it doesn't look the same here because it's not rendered marvelous designer does not contain a rendering engine for the sake that as someone just said they wanted c4d most people who use Marvelous Designer are going to render it outside of Marvelous Designer in their preferred software program. Or in, or they're going to have to sculpt on top of it, make edits. That is why it does not contain a rendering engine. Uh, I would love to do that, though. I'll make a note of that, though. If you requested enough, maybe I can convince everyone to get me C40. Sticky notepad. Okay. So, I'm going to do a full little circle here. So, I'm going to turn off this let me I'm gonna clean it up for those of you who might be new who haven't seen this um, this is what we made last time it is kind of the the silhouette was kind of inspired by the um, Adams family mom whose name I am totally blanking on at this exact second so that we have this really lovely um, mermaid style skirt this is definitely a hobble skirt and then we do have these pleated pieces here you can't really see it right now. I'm gonna turn on the um, higher quality render, like render textures. And then I'm gonna turn off my internal lines just so we can see this and I'll kind of have, understand what's going on here. This color as well, for those of you who are new, this means that I have subdivided in the scene here. This is much smaller and a much more dense portion than this below lower piece here. You can see that I can click it. And that's been applied to some of the others as well. Morticia, thank you. A little Morticia inspired dress, but it's teal because I have a problem with teal and I love it a little too much. So this is how it looks right now. What is the texture that I have on this? Because I definitely adjusted it. Oh, I picked fabric shiny. That's fine. I can move it around because this is the default fabric currently. So today we are going to be using these sleeves. We may use them, we may not use them, but we are moving on to some sleeves here. So you can see here I have pins holding it in place because we are cheating and we are not doing it the way that you would in real life because we don't have to. So I am using the B hotkey. Eventually one day I will find a on-screen keyboard I'll put one in here someday. Oh, did I make all this five particle distance too? Hold on. I did have to do some reduction. This is all, this is all 20. Okay, so we're still good. Except for the one. Okay. So we're working on the sleeves today. I'm going to go ahead. First thing, I'm freezing the rest of this. I don't need it to be causing me problems. So you can see here this blue is the frozen. Freeze the beautiful skirt. So right now we're doing only the sleeve, so I'm going to freeze the rest of this so that I don't have to worry about it as much in the calculations. These sleeves should not affect the fit of this dress, so I'm that is why I'm freezing everything except for the sleeves. I'm using the B hotkey to then basically delete these sewing relationships for the sleeves. And I'm going to make this a little bit cleaner just so you guys can see what's going on. So this is the center front. I'm going to move these. And this is center back. And I'm moving this to the sides. Since we are kind of focusing on the sleeves, I am sorting them in a way that you guys can see it a little bit 
easier and understand how the sewing relationship works. This will change because <laughs> these sleeves are going to become very long. Oh, thank you, Mike. Uh, let's see. Okay. So in sewing relationships, I'm going to simulate this really fast so the sleeve pops away. Okay. So I simulated, I've stopped. These sleeves are now going to fall down if I don't do anything. So because I used a base um, t-shirt for the sleeve available in the modular mode from the previous stream, you can see here that I have sewing information from the sleeve. So this is the front, the front portion of the sleeve and this is the back portion of the sleeve. They are actually different shapes, but it really doesn't matter because we're just gonna be making some pretty gathered sleeves in a minute and probably a cape to go over the sleeves. Hey Black Swan, welcome back. Um, let me grab Let me grab what the chat was talking about on Discord. Where is that link? So I know I mean open image a new tab. I know sure I wanted to see something like this, but I will it's gonna consume a lot of a uh, simulation, but I will do a version like this for you. Because what we'll probably do today is have this be the opaque sleeve and then we'll do a whole capelet on top of it that's sheer just to make it as busy as possible because we're not, we're not going to have her animate. That is the plan. I am not intending for her to animate today because that would be an absolute nightmare. Possible, but a nightmare. And you guys would probably wait like three hours for her to just do a walking cycle. Oh, hi there. Welcome. Welcome in from Hong Kong. Okay, so we'll do this lower sleeve first because it'll be the opaque sleeve. And also we're doing the lower, uh, lower layers. So for this sleeve, it's going to be on top of what's already in existence. So we're going to be doing this sleeve first and then the next one that goes on top because it is best to work with you're understanding the layers of what you're making. I want to add more here, but the cape will do it for me. And we'll probably utilize uh, GPU simulation. So I will sew my sleeve back in place. If you have an existing sleeve from the modular mode, this one is great because it does use the um, existing, like a real sewing pattern. And so you can see here this point just so you all do know this. Sleeves are funny. The back sleeve is actually longer than the front portion of the sleeve. These aren't gonna sew in perfectly. That's fine because I'll be making complete changes to this. I do just wanna have this sew into the sleeve. So front goes to the front and back goes to the back. And that is why I have this in this way, just so you can all have a better visual of how these sleeves function. If I was to sew this freehand, I would be going from right to left and then from right to left, as you've seen in the older tutorials. This is gonna completely change because we're chopping off the bottom. So what we're gonna do is turn this into this lower portion of the sleeve. This right here, I'm going to be keeping as one simple piece just for the sake of um, design and, under and comprehension, just so it's a little easier for everyone to be able basically remake it if you want it at home. Because once you get the fit in place, then you can start creating and adding your details once you're all done. So I'm simulating now. Because there's a lot in the scene, let me see. I bet you I can just, I don't think this is gonna cause me any problems. So I'm actually gonna deactivate these, uh, control J. Control J uh, will reactivate if it's frozen and it'll deactivate, which is this dark blue. So uh, shift Q to hide it. So I know it's deactivated. It'll stay in the scene as you can see in my 2D window, but it will not be calculated into any collision and it will not be calculated into any um, simulation required. So because I'm going to assume that these sleeves will not collide with this uh, skirt right now, I'm hiding it for the sake of uh, my simulation speed. 
mostly because I am working with um, one garment. Normally I would work with multiple garments and separate them by their layers. But in this case, it's just only the one, which is making it a little bit more difficult for me to uh, cut up my simulation, cut up my garments and make them into a, a bit of a faster simulation speed. But it's the nature of what I've chosen to do and what the chat wants to see. So we're just gonna make all the fabric everywhere all at once. I wanna see that other movie, I haven't seen it yet. So first of all, it's this big flowy, this is a reference image. We're making this big flowy, um, not really a bell sleeve, but it's the, I really don't remember what this is actually called, but it's like one of those fantasy sleeves. I'll probably make it even flowier just to make my life more difficult, but we'll make that base first. So as you can see, these sleeves here are symmetrically linked. So I'm just going to pull one down and it'll pull the other one down with it. Holding shift so it doesn't go anywhere else. This is going to cause a collision issue. There it is. That's fine because I want this to open on the top. So I'm using my uh, mouse here. My gizmo will appear, but at the center of the gizmo is a little ghost that you can use for reference. It's my little reference ghost. He's a little helper. So as you can see, I'm also choosing the apex on my avatar of the curve of the arm but you can see it's also not actually in the center of the pattern, but it is in line with the apex on the uh, shoulder here. That is because it, there's more space to go around the back of the shoulder than there is to go on the front, if you really wanted to, but you don't have to take that into consideration. Just uh, use your reference lines and then be like, cool, this works out. I don't need to know why sometimes. Okay, uh, select it again. So I'm just making crosses, a cross section here, because what I do want to do is, I'm gonna remove this top portion and then this entire piece is going to be cut. So let's give her, let me see. Uh, right now I'm trying to cut out where I want this to go. I can always bring this back up, but I do want to probably do it here and I'm using the control point. I'm using control to create a curve point here and hitting enter to complete. And I'll, I'll clean this up in a minute. Again, using control. And then I'll see where this goes. I need to turn on my internal lines again so I can actually see it. Where is it? So you can see here that this design, this isn't, this doesn't look right. So I'm just going to use the uh, curve tool or the C hotkey and I'm going to clean this up a little bit. I'm going to move this point as well. And these ones will be in line. Uh, align, bottom. Let's see. Anything I do to one side will happen to the other. So I'm just checking here. It does look like I want this to be higher just for the sake of the design a little bit. It's, e it's easier to remove some of it once you've cut it away. Okay. Merge these into place. Merge to point. Convert to curve point and adjust my curve points. I'm being a little more meticulous just so you can see the problem solving than you really would have to be. But you can see here how it's how it's making some changes. And right now I'm just using the curve point tool. With this tool, you can add points. There it goes. You can add more curve points or you can adjust them. As you're seeing me do. So I'm just gonna go with this. For now, I'm going to select a uh, cut because I'm gonna delete the top half. 
for both. And then, uh, let's see, this bisected line here, I'm using cut and sew, which makes sure that it creates a sewing relationship. And then I'm choosing cut and sew again. And I don't actually want the sewing relationship. And I'm going to let this simulate so that it kind of settles itself and then I'll pull it out of her hand. There's a couple ways you can pull it out of the hand if you're encountering that issue. In this case, it worked out just fine. Sometimes you can also use the select mesh brush, which I believe you saw me do in the last stream. So here I'm using control H and you come over here. Let this solve itself. So now that sleeve's coming down. And that hasn't happened to this one yet, so let's give that a fix. Control H. I like using Control H a lot because it does help it. Sometimes that's all you really need to get it out of the sleeve or to help it solve itself. Encourage it. And now I'll just turn that off. So we are on our way right now to the sleeve that we were looking at. I'm going to add more volume because I just want to make everything a problem. So this just ends in a curve. So let's go ahead and do that. And then I can say, here's that simple sleeve. So the thing is that I don't actually need that seam in the middle. So what I will do is use the edit pattern tool. Actually, no, which one is it? That's the B hockey. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So because there's a sewing relationship between these two pieces, I can use the edit sewing tool, right click that edit sewing tool and choose merge. Select the piece you don't want to move and then pick merge. And then I'm going to clean this up just a little bit. Uh, convert to curve point. And I'm going to delete that one. And rotate uh, X axis so that this is straight. This is going up and down now. The reason behind that is the grain of the material right now for this basic material fabric and how this how I'm working is the grain is very important. I guess we'll talk about that for a second. So with it going up and down, the grain's always going to be up and down unless you make changes using the texture tool, edit texture tool. It also affects the grain. This is the grain. This is the my materials going up and down vertically because it does act like real fabric. So if I had this on the bias, which would be the diagonal, a square woven material turns into a diamond and it stretches the most on that diamond. So right now I don't want to deal with that and I'm not taking that into account. So I am keeping my grain up and down. So basically just keep it up and down. You'll be fine. And be hucky and I'll do it to the other side merge. And then I'm going to make sure. Oops. Convert to curve point and delete. Rotate X axis. I'm selecting that one point that's flat. I'm selecting these two. There should not have been a, a, any change. So I'm going to go to applied link, apply linked editing and symmetric pattern with sewing. And now they're linked again. So anything that happens to one does continue to happen to the other. So now I'm going to do that simple sleeve first that we liked the really long one holding shift so I don't go a little to the left or right. Sometimes that does happen, so keep an eye on that as you're working. This time it will go like this. We'll simulate that. And this is also why I've removed that front skirt from my simulation. Why are you doing that? Why, why are you doing that? I'm going to make sure my sewing, it looks like I accidentally cut it off somehow. 
Uh, let's see. Oh, that is crossed using the B hotkey, uh, reverse sewing, and that'll fix it. Let me see. Let me make sure. Oh. Oh. You know what? It's a metric pattern with sewing. Because I deleted my segment point, maybe it'll work. No. Fine. Let me bring it back. Split. Uniform split. Okay. Because it's going around in a circle, I'm going to have to do it this way. Segment. Free sewing. Make sure it matches. Sometimes this happens while you're working if you're not careful. Because it's going in the opposite direction, that's why this is happening. There we go. Now it'll appear correctly. Hoopland sleeves. Thank you. Let's find that. Or Hopeland. I, I only read them. I don't remember. Yeah, they're the overgown sleeves. Yeah, they're very different. There's a there's just overgown sleeves. I didn't realize that name was. So this type of sleeve is basically just a medieval overgown sleeve from uh, the 1400s. So it would be the medieval times. But the specifics of these sleeves are really just high collared neck opening, um, the big loose sleeves. That's really the determination for the sleeve. All right. Not specific whatsoever. And she's not wearing a chemise. We are not doing that. All right. So we are going to just give it that small curve that we saw. And then I'm going to go off and do what I want to do. Because here's where you can start just designing and then Yeah, let's see. Okay, we're going to play this game. So you can see here that these pieces are colliding with this dress. They are very long. Let me see. Um, and so an easy way to get them out, but just remember how you're working, is to give your sleeves a layer value of one and to make sure that they pop back out. And then remove the layer value. So these ones are a little too long as we saw, so I'm going to go right ahead and move it back up. And there is one of the basic sleeves. There's that type of sleeve. I'll clean this up a little bit up here, and then I'm just going to make this a giant cascading sleeve because that is something you guys wanted to see la one of the not last time but on one of the channels you wanted to see the big flowy sleeves I'll show you how that how that's done like underneath okay so also to support this I'm going to so this is going the mo the point that's going to have stretch on this sleeve is going to be this upper where the cap used to be so what I'm going to do is use the seam taping tool, which is right up here in the 2D window. And I'm going to apply that to this line. There we go. And it, it should apply it to both of them since they are symmetrically linked. And I will simulate it so it'll probably pop this back up a little bit. But I do need to remember that I've increased the friction on my avatar. There we go. And there's that sleeve. 
So I'm leaving this like here, like this here. So who was asking for this? Uh, uh, Sherna, you were asking for this. So here's where you would slice it. Make sure that your sewing is consistent. Obviously, this one's not across that center line. This is where once you've done everything, then you start bringing in your, your higher resolution details. You slice your line here, and then you start applying your textures, your buttons, your holes, and then your lacing would go here. Because I'm going to be adding more to the scene, I'm not doing that at this stage. So, people wanted to see the super cascady sleeves. I'm going to I'm going to apply that here. Let me check the chat. Uh, Katana, oh, thanks for stopping by. We are working on some dresses and some sleeves today and a cape. So let me grab a drink of water. Well, ginger ale. We can, if you guys don't like the, desi the design of the sleeve here, let me know. But we will be applying a sheer cape across the entire upper torso of the avatar. So it will be hidden. So people want to see those super uh, big flowy drapey sleeves. That's what we're going to do next. And that's also why we've moved the sleeves over here. <laughs> Let me put these back in their respective areas. Also, mind you, my UV, my UV right now is not clean. I would sort this later for export. But right now I'm doing it just so you can see. As, as you can see, it's not the prettiest thing. So here are the sleeves as they are. What we want is to have a lot more volume down here. So just like we've done with some of the other skirts, we are going to go to the edit pattern tools and use the slash and spread tool. You did see it a little bit last time, if I remember correctly. I'm not going to do it at the center because I'm, it'll help me maintain the grain, like I was saying earlier. So what I'm using slash and spread for is I can use slash and spread and then just pivot portions of the sleeve to add volume without changing the length of the sewing line. So I can just start adding more and more to one side and I can do the same to the other. Oops. I will have to change my bottom piece, but that's fine. And since I'm working from the center outwards, I could have done this uh, with a symmetrical link, but it's because I already have sleeves in the seam on both sides that I'm not doing that. Just so you guys can kind of see it. Oops, don't do that. Do it one way. And one more. And I'm selecting the one I want to move because I don't want to move them both. And I'm simulating. This is a lot of material here in the scene. And I'm still using a CPU simulation. So here you can see there's a whole lot more volume on the bottom when without there being more volume on the top. So we can make this bigger, but first of all, let's go ahead and turn off simulation. And we're just going to delete these. Uh, oops, don't do that. We're going to delete these segment points again. Uh, I hate working with the Bezier curves. The curve points are a little bit easier to work with. We do recommend using the curve points instead of Bezier curves, just because if you need to make changes along your line, the Bezier curves are a lot easier to make those changes using. I figured this would happen. Again, I'm making my layer, any layer above, I'm just going to make this five, and it'll pop back out. If you're encountering things like this and you're impatient like me, you can just select and check. So it's just this back portion that's being a little bit of a, a brat. Let's see. This lower bit, I can just pull them out. Basically, it's this whole lower bit.
and then pull that out of her hand. So you can see how much more volume there is here. And it's evenly distributed instead of being just like in the center. I could add more also on the sides if I wanted, but let's see how this looks without strengthening. And just for fun, we'll go back and make this, uh, this fabric of velvet. I just really like how the velvet looks. It's just so pretty. Mmm, <laughs> so pretty and shiny. But it's not draping like a velvet. It's just looking like a velvet. So we're sticking with shiny just so you can kind of see the lines. All right, what do you guys think? Should we make this even more voluminous on the sleeve? We are putting a whole cape on the top next still. <laughs> more? Okay, we've got one vote for more. More. <laughs> more volume. I'm going to clean this up a little bit, and I'll give you guys the chance. Stop simulating. And I'm, I'm changing all of the... Oop, don't do that. Changing all of the points that were made from the tool, and I'm converting them to curve points. And then I'm deleting the curve points. All right, we've got one vote for more volume. Anyone not want more volume? Because otherwise, that's what we're going to do. Might as well. So again, I'm using slash and spread. I'll do a couple more. I will focus it, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus it not at the center, but I will focus more of the volume at the sides rather than at the center. One, two, I'll do three more on each side. Mind you, the more I do this, the more it's going to have to calculate. But this is why we're going to freeze this once it's all done. Okay. <laughs> More volume. All right. This one's stuck in her arm here, so well, I'll just let it settle for a second, and then I'll pull it back out. Oh, no, I don't want that. I want this one. Just right here. Now, this is also going to get heavier and heavier while you're working. So if you see your sleeve stretch and you don't want that to happen, you can apply bonding to that. I will go to my selection. So I'm selecting these sleeves here. Right now, her my avatar's um, got, got an increase in her. Or did I bring it back? Oh, no, the defaults are back on. Okay, actually, no, that's fine. So I'm still going to do this. I'm going to apply bonding or a strengthening to this sleeve. Get out of there. Just to support it um, once I've sorted this one out. Yeah, you can see it's stretched. Okay, we'll let that... Let this guy sort himself out for a second. If he doesn't want to, I'm going to do not 2D, reset 3D arrangement. Not doing that. Reset 2D arrangement. Come here, you. So reset arrangement, there's the 2D and then the 3D. 2D is it's returning it to exact its exact position on your 2D window or in your UV area. But then the reset 3D is if you did use the arrangement points, which I did, it'll wrap it, how it'll bring it back to how it was before it was simulated using those arrangement points and the bounding volumes. 
But because this is from a normal sleeve and this is completely different from what it used to be, it wrapped around like you saw. I'm just letting it come back up. And letting that get all sorted, I will apply strengthening to that sleeve, remove it from this one, and then let's see. So I will apply bonding to these two pieces. So you've been seeing me use strengthening. Bonding is very similar. Uh, in real life, you would use, um, you would bond another material to it. So when I select bond, it'll give me an option for fusible common, Let me bring it here. Lapel, non-woven, small parts like pocket boning, reinforcement. They're kind of all different types. Um, in this case, we'll use a fusible common because it doesn't need to be super stiff. It does make it stiffer and it, it compounds with whatever, um, it compounds whatever stiffness is applied from that material to this one. So basically think like you basically have a, a normal men's button up shirt and inside those the collar, that's the, the fusible bonding. So there's another material in there, keeping it a little stiffer. So I'm just gonna fiddle around with this for a second. Turn off that. You'll see it's a little bit more uh, orange, it's a little discolored. So you'll see here that I know it's applied. Is there a way to disable self-collision on certain parts of the garment while simulating? Uh, technically, yes, I have hidden my skirt front here. These pieces are uh, disabled entirely. So you can't do it. Can you? Let me make sure. Right now, right now we only have it as freeze. So you would want to select your materials, uh, Anthony. You would want to select, you would want to cut whatever that piece is if you want it, only a portion of it to not uh, be calculated or move at all. You would want to cut those pieces off separately and then turn off simulation or turn off the, um, let me select it so you can see it. They're hidden right now. So these ones are not activated. So you would deactivate and make sure to turn off sewing if you don't want the sewing relationship with them to still exist so you would turn off activation it it looks like deactivate right now these are deactivated and hidden so she's got this whole gown in the front of her that's you can't see um just because i want to make these things so you would deactivate them and then not worry about them until you reactivate them So right now, there's no way to do it aside from if you wanted specific portions, I would outline those portions with whatever tool, cut and sew them so that they, they don't ever, they don't move, and then deactivate those portions. This is going to get so busy in a minute. Okay, so we've applied all the volume here. I don't know. I kind of like the idea of giving these ruffles, like not, not ruffles, but making these um, wavy, uh, convert to curve line. What do you guys think? Uh, scallops, that's the word, scallop edges. What do you guys think of the scallop edges? You can't really see them, but we know they're there. Here, we'll also add, like I supported the seam up here, we can also make these edges uh, a little bit stiffer. So this is also like applying a very small amount of the bonding to the edge. Oh, 
And then that'll also have it flare out if we want. What do you guys think? I almost want to make this more divided and more uh, up here, actually. We, I like the length, but I do want to do more of this so you can see it. What do you guys think? What does the chat think? Do we like this more? Or do we like the other one a little bit more? And I kind of want to offset them a little more as well. Where's the back? That's the back. I'm gonna do what I want with the design until the chat says otherwise. So I'm offsetting this so they'll appear more roughly. No, I don't like that. It doesn't look nice. Never mind, it doesn't look nice. But I like the roughly, but I don't like the offset part. I do, let's see. Make this the largest width, largest width. I'm holding shift while selecting all of this and then I'm gonna make them all the largest. So we like this one a little bit more. So I've made them the largest width so that you can actually, so it's gonna push it out a little bit. You don't see the orange anywhere else but in Marvelous Designer while you're working. You know what I do wanna do? I wanna see if maybe we'll just put another little pickup right here. Uh, let's see. Split uh, 88.4, I'm gonna remember 88.4. Split line, 88. So just make it 88 even. Okay. All right. Split, 88. Okay. And then I'm gonna free sew a little bit, just a little bit, just a little dot. And then I'm gonna move little up <laughs> okay and now that these are exactly the same length I liked it there but I kind of want to see if I can get some more Deeper cuts in the scallops. Yeah, they aren't very distinct. I'm also pulling it up so we can see them a little bit more. Come on out. So the reason it's colliding inside is because I've left the layers on and it's uh, the direction is based on layers or layer values. Are, oh, you, what are you, what are you doing? Layer values are based on the direction of your normals, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove that. Okay. Yeah, we'll probably make the scallops a little bit deeper. I just wanna see if pulling it up this way will help them. Yeah, we're gonna make those scallops deeper.
don't know. This kind of looks a little funky, but we're going to see. Don't do that. And I'll have them kind of point downward a little bit. Oops. It's like a Christmas tree. Give that a second. Animation mode and common issues. Have you seen the other animation mode that we recently released? Because it does have, it doesn't specifically point out the common issues, but it does reference um, best practices to avoid the common issues. But we can. We can make one. We can make a tips and tricks video on the... On that. This looks really weird. But we're going to see how we, how we like it. Which code? I don't know what you're asking. Yeah, we can definitely uh, wor work on that, add it to our, our tutorial list. But definitely make sure that you've seen the other video as well. I believe uh, Brandon made that video. This is Marvelous Designer without any extra added to it. Uh, Rom-com. And this is also why my skirt's frozen. I'm about, I am this close to deactivating this skirt. All right, where's those first ruffles? Oh, this one's not on the sleeve. Eh, where you at? Come here. Romcom, if you can clarify your question a little bit further, I can uh, give you an answer, but I don't know what you're asking. Or if my answer sufficed, let me know. Because I'm just using Marvelous Designer without any, without any Python running. No scripts, no nothing. Okay, that's it. We're going to play this game today. And activate, uh, deactivate.
if you want to do any um, coding specifically for Marvelous Designer, you will have to use Python. That is the only script we have. Uh, that is the only script option that we have. There we go. All right, chat. What do you guys think of this? Do we want to leave it like this? Leave these uh these guys as is, and then move on to the next one. I'm going to pin this right now just to keep it away from the skirt. Uh, with the uh, W hotkey. And then... Because I also know that I have my other pieces underneath. So I'm going to go ahead and freeze this for now. Here, I'll bring this back in so you guys can see it too. Control A, Shift Q, Control A. I do have another hour, so I want to do the cape sleeves too. So uh, unless you want any changes to these existing sleeves, we will move on. Right now I'm simulating these sleeves to, on top of the hidden portions earlier. Delete those pins. Yep, because they're not colliding. Come back, thank you. You can delete them individually or you can also right click your pattern and choose pin and then delete all pins. Oh, awesome. Well, welcome. So if we want to keep these crazy scallops, we're going to keep them. Speak now or forever hold your peace. Okay, so right now I'm letting it settle down. And now I'm stopping my simulation and I am going to freeze it and freeze these upper sleeves. It's going to cause some problems later. Welcome to uh, the woman, uh, the woman who doesn't exist to you. Welcome to the chat. Um, we are working on Marvelous Designer, which is a CG cloth simulation software. This is uh, not all with coding. This is just with Marvelous Designer software, which is the name of the channel. If you go to the main channel, you can go to our website where you can see uh, what our software does. More than just, you know, this. Because I am basically just drafting clothes right now. And if you stay longer, I do have an announcement that for the uh, fashion side to share at the end of the stream. I'm going to turn this one back on because it's okay. This is colliding with her, and I don't want that to happen. Okay. Are my pins missing? Oh, goodness. Put those pins right back. Yep, yeah, those pins are gone. Okay. Pin. Put those pins right back. Okay. And freeze them again. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to be doing a little cape. But the question is if we, do we want to have her, in, her arms in this pose for this cape? Or should we have her arms at her sides? E. 
Uh, let's see. Everything should be at zero. Make all these at layer zero right now. I might move her arms down just for the cape purpose. It. Mm. Let's see. What do I want here? For, mm, I'm like, mm. <laughs> let's see. I'm going to move her arms down just a little bit. Close only, maintain all, yes. We'll give that a second while she moves her arms down. Because I like her arms at her sides, but I, I could do that later. Okay, we'll give that a second. Yes, um, uh, the woman who doesn't exist, actually, uh, if you go to the description of the video you're watching right now in our, in the YouTube video, since you're on YouTube, um, the link to our website is right there. It'll be MarvelousDesigner.com, and you can just select the website there if you want. Or, or as Rosemary said, I will link it, uh, at the end of the stream. Okay, so... We have our crazy scallop sleeves. Now, this is also a great example of what can happen with the stretch of the material. Um, it's not simulating. But you can see it's there is strain here. And because we, uh, it's not that stiff or it depends on the material. I haven't even selected material for this yet. But the strain is always going to be like vertical and then horizontal because of, or vertical and then diagonal just because of how the grain of fabric works. So I've moved her arms down. So I'm going to be doing a cape-like thing over here that is clear this time so we can see the design. <laughs> because last time we couldn't see most of it. And I was sad. Um, I'm going to bring in that sleeve again. So I'm actually, uh, I deleted the sleeve. I could have saved it. Doesn't really matter. I remember that I used my t-shirts from my modular configurator blocks. Uh, it was a set in sleeve. It doesn't really make much of a difference here. It's going to throw the modular frames in my screen. There it goes. I'm going to grab a short sleeve. I just want the sleeve shape. Gimme, gimme. Mm. I'm not going to be doing anything else with this. I could bring in like a shirt base if I wanted to, if I couldn't figure out how this on the shirt on the chest was going to fit. I'm just going to be doing like a straight line or a couple of straps across. So I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to switch this back to my my fabrics, right click. I don't need these frames anymore, so I'm going to go ahead and right click, remove modular relationship, delete, yes. The reason I've done this is that I now know these perfectly sew in here. So I'm going to delete that sewing. It's like, okay, the question is, no, I will actually steal from this pattern if I do. Okay. I'm going to actually sew it right back in, but without stitching together the uh, sleeves. And I'm going to make these layer like five, whatever. These are going to go on top, so it's fine. Standing collars, perhaps you use one on the capelet. Ooh. We have, I want to do a whole tutorial video on just different styles of collars. Two. You know, I couldn't do one on the call on this. Hmm. I could just have this whole thing be a collar. Let's see. Either way, I'm going to go ahead and cut this off. 
and then I'll figure out a way to put a color in there. I'd like it to be, because we could do just a full super fast chiffon, um, chiffon one, because that is a good point on the collars. And do this uh, in point here. Where are you? You. Align top. Oh. And then I'm going to eyeball this one. Close enough. Extend and trim, and then I'm cutting this. Don't tell anybody I'm working. I'm like, like, don't tell anyone I'm working on collar patterns eventually, <laughs> she says to everyone. Tell nobody. You didn't hear it from me. Okay, also to make this a lot easier, another workflow these are all frozen remember that i don't want them affecting each other i will have to do that i will have to take this away before i simulate again collision thickness i'm making it five to prevent this next piece from colliding with it because all of this is still 20 particle distance this will get finer and finer with um when i go down to like five but you guys don't want to see that midstream it takes a lot of time so um I'm going to step it down at the, like, for the very end, for the final, like, really pretty renders. But for now, I'm making this five particle distance so that it will help prevent the collision from happening when I'm working on this most, uppermost layer. So, trying to think of how I want to do this. So, we can do a capelet. We can do a collared capelet if we wanted with, like, a little collar or something. Because originally I was just going to do like a strap across this and then have a strap here that's just like that connects all the chiffon together. Because I want to have this be absolutely ridiculous and have a giant cape in the back. Because I just never want to see this ever animate. Um, and I, I apparently hate myself. Let's see. We have okay, 45 minutes. Um, either way, I'm going to make a... This is sewn to the front, but I do want to put... I'll put something. I'll put something here. The very least to stabilize it. Because this would be a nightmare if I didn't. So I'm using the shadow of my avatar here. And let's see how this goes. other way. So I'm going to sew it um, on the frontmost portion just for the sake of seeing how it's going to look. Oh god. Move that. Cuz I don't have a plan for this sleep for this. Um Cuz hopefully this would counter lever the strain. And then of the garment because it will pull. Uh, let's see. I would also end up stitching it here, giving it strength. Probably make this gold. Make it gold. Thank you. I just have a bunch of random dress dresses to my left that I'm looking at. Um, so we could do a classic way. How did that black dress look? Let me see. Let's 
I could also just do right here. We could just do a bunch of straps. Um, let me see. I could also just let the chiffon gather around the back of the neck and just make it super, super simple and have it be a half skirt, a half circle. Um, let's give those other options a try here. I'm going to simulate this. Oh, control K. Because I do want to see what can happen if I... I can do here. Okay. I do want to add some kind of strap, strappy little strappy something on the top. Here I'm not actually measuring it, but I will measure. Uh, split. 100 and... Let me see. Let's make it 100. Where's that? Let's make it 100, okay? On both sides. And then let's see how this looks. I am cheating, but I'm also trying to keep it as least cheating as possible. So I'm right-clicking this in the 3D window, choosing superimpose side, and it'll appear directly to the side of this. This is too wide. I can already see that. So this will also help prevent my need for my... Um, for these pieces here. Um for those pins because now I no longer need those pins. I would like to apply the more and more support is fine. Cause I can also do a cross a crisscross a little bit. I'm just going to leave that like that for now and think more about how I like it or how we don't like it. Freezing that again. Let's see. I like an idea of this going across. I could go over the sleeve with that, but it would gather a lot. Let's just see how we like that. Um, Cause then it wouldn't be much of the sleeve sleeve. You know what? We're going to play. We're going to play it this way. We're going to play it this way. We're just going to make it, as big of a mess as we can and see how we like it. So we're going to start with the sleeves as we did last time. As you can see, my simulation is a little bit slower than it was before. That is because I there's everything is in the scene. There's everything in the scene. Uh, uh, delete all curve points, Z, delete all curve points, V, hotkey to add one curve point. And give it the most success, I'm going to pivot it out from the ground. Control H, Control H to strengthen and hopefully prevent any collision. That is already long. And we'll simulate that. We are not simulating that at 10 particle distance. Absolutely not. Actually, we'll even use, I'm not using GPU simulation because I do not want to deal with that collision. We'll just hide everything we've done. And as you can see here, because I added the additional collision thickness, it's not colliding with the pieces below it like the other one was trying to do. Let me move this. 
Okay. Just for funsies, we're going to do this. And I want this gathered, right? So I don't want this. I don't want too much. So what I'm going to do is pull this out straight. Move it again. And it's going to go into that one super small sleeve. So we do have that large gather. So my idea so far is, unless the chat wants to see something else, is I'm either... <laughs> it'll be chiffon. It'll be fine. Um, uh, come on. It, there we go. I'm either going to do these sleeves like this, and I'm probably just going to continue this along the back and make this entire shoulder piece into a golden uh, strap that we've done before, like a golden piece. Probably going from here across the shoulder and having it be an entire solid gold look and then have the cape coming out of the actual back here. Like it's on top kind of looking. So let's add the silk chiffon value to this. So now you can see it. I will apply all of the pleating again, but this way you can see what it looks like underneath this. Because the more I do this, the slower my simulation is going to get. I will do what we've just done a minute ago, which is slash and spread. <laughs> Move this over here. <laughs> okay. So I'm making sure to keep that center point in the center so that I don't have to worry about the grain of my material. And I gotta move this. This one, we're not doing any scallops, which is gonna be a pretty thing. Delete all curve points and also delete all segment points. And the computer does whimper. It's very far away from the uh, the microphone. You cannot hear it. It is very loud. Unless you had a heat, in, if you don't have a heat sink, it's very loud, I should say. Oh, I don't like the Bezier curves. Some people like Bezier curves again, some people don't. We don't recommend working with the Bezier curves just because if you move an angle over here, it affects how it looks. I'm just going to keep this square. So I'm making sure that this is square off of this so that it's basically the same. Okay. Reset 2D arrangement. Yes, they're all the way over here, but <laughs> it'll be easier for us. So you're going to end up seeing a couple of options here because I'm going to be manipulating this into a different shape that's most likely going to be a rectangle at the end of all of this because I want to have that back piece and I'm halfway through the stream. I have another I have another 30 minutes to do this. And again, I am turning them as close as I can to the sewing to where they're going to go. And then, because they're just so big. If I didn't have anything in the scene already, I would use the um, GPU simulation, but I have mm -hmm. a lot of collision in the, in this scene.
I'm trying to make it so you guys can see it. So you could use GPU simulation here, but the thing is that GPU simulation is not meant for this stage of work and design, and you are more likely to have collision issues if you did. And then I'm gonna add a cake, <laughs> and then more to the back. This is getting fan as fan. This is as getting as fancy and complex as that wedding dress. Except for that one had ruffles. This one's just pleating. The ruffles were a nightmare. I tell you, we'll just let this settle for a second. as it goes off and does what it wants. Okay. Once this settles down, I'll start making the changes to this upper portion of the dress and then we are going to do the capelet. Because it'll be basically a capelet zone on top, but you know. Come on. And the reason that this does not have layer values in this scene right now is because you can see the uh, flipped normal of the lowest of the sleeve down here. If this had, like, if this had a layer value of like five, because it bases the nor the layer value on the direction of the normals, it would want to go on the other side of that normal. So that is why I'm not working with normals right now. And I'm not, or with layers. What is going on with you? Come here. Pop away. Sort yourself out. Yeah, so this is the thing is the more layers you want, the lo the short the longer it's going to take to simulate. Okay. And also, like, the more, um, shift, the more material values you have, it also does that. So you'll actually see if I did uh, fabric one, it'll be a little faster to simulate. Oops. And then I'll do the back piece. I think we're going to go like that. Yeah, but you can see here, I've applied the fabric one and it's much faster to simulate because it's not having mm -hmm. to consider it as another material than the base material. But to make life easier and faster, we're going to work like this. I want to add, I want to have this capelet look like it's attached on the top and it's just going to be gold. So I'm going to design that now with the draw on the 3D line tool. Where is it? I never remember what it looks like right now. Here it is. Cut it out. Come here. Pop, Pop that up. Line 3D pattern tool. I'm going to have it go. Where is it on her dress? Looks like it's about here. So I'm going to do a curve point here. It's not like this would actually like work and function and be realistic because how would weight distribute evenly like this? But you know what? It's, it's, this is my fantasy dress, our fantasy dress. In an our fantasy world, 
we don't worry about fit and how it will logically work. This strap's going to be part of it, so let's see. We're going to go up of this fantasy item. So I'm going to go up like this. Because this is my fantasy world. Oops. I'm making sure to use uh, curve points with the control just like you normally do. Oh, maybe I do not want it to be that. I'm just going to keep it a straight line. And double clicking on the edge. And then I'm going to use the edit line tool, select my two lines, and I'm only working on the half here. Uh, convert to internal shape. So I can see all of this now. And because of that, I can do uh, this. So this is going to get messy in this. I'm going to cheat and use layer cheat. I'm going to be uh, efficient and use layer clone over. Layer clone over. So this is an entire layer clone. Everything, this entire bodice has been cloned with a layer on top. But I don't need them to be connected anymore. I need them to be connected with each other, but not with that lower layer. So I'm going to remove linked editing, apply linked editing across each other. Symmetric pattern with sewing. So I will show you what it looks like, uh, symmetric pattern with sewing. When you apply linked editing, it sews every single internal line that you've made on this garment. So if I hit B, which is the sewing hotkey, I can see that those internal lines I made, it's sewing to them. So what I can now do is hope it does it the way I want it to do. Actually, I'm going to do it. I'm going to make it happen. I'm actually deleting. Ah, sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. I'm going to go ahead and cut these. I'm going to cut those internal lines I made because I don't need them. So cut. Hopefully, we'll see which uh, one wins the coin toss. Okay, the upper one won. Some of the upper, sometimes the upper pieces lo lose the coin toss of who gets to keep the sewing relationship. Sometimes they win. <sighs> Looks like only one won, but that's fine. And so if they don't win that coin toss, so sew, sew them right back on. Because these layers are actually sewing directly onto each other. And make sure that they sew into each other as well if you need to. Sometimes you don't need to worry about it. Sometimes you, sh you just should check it. We'll see how it works in a minute. And then these pieces are going to be activated. So now you can see the colors and see what it looks like. I'm going to make them gold. So I'm selecting all of them and I'll just hit this little install button. I'll probably add some straps here, but we'll see. Because they're all sewn to each other right now. If I simulate, this will now simulate on top. Okay, and let's sew them together. So you can see the little gaps in between. That's because they're sewn to the layer below them, not the actual gold piece right next to them. So if I don't want that, I'm just going to have to delete the full sewing relationship and then do it manually. And then, yeah, you can see here. And because they're symmetrically linked, it is applied, but I do want to see, we'll sew in 3D as well. So segment sewing, sew this to this. Yes, there's a layer there. Okay, where are you? Sometimes the layer clone over works really well. Sometimes it's not as efficient, depending on how you want specifically to work. Uh, make sure not to cross your sewing lines.
Yes. Good. You. Where are you sign? Where are you going? Uh, reverse my sewing. Make. Don't reverse. That's fine. That should be fine. Let's check. Better not cause me problems. All right, not bad. So right now I'm just kind of cleaning this up, sewing it in place. I should probably turn off the sleeve here. What are you doing? Come here, you. So right now I'm trying to solve this while my sleeve is still activated. So that's what's causing it to be really, really slow. So let's fix that real fast. Now I can more easily use the sewing tool in the 3D window, making sure that they're not crossed as best I can. Okay, and now I can do this. Okay, come here. I'm gonna reattach it because this isn't a real garment. And I can, because of that, I can do what I want. So I can sew this to the respective piece, at least on the shoulders. Let's see. And this very small piece here. And then where's the, we'll simulate this piece again. See, had I actually planned to have this, I would have designed this first, but I didn't. So we are here. So because I'm cheating and this doesn't actually need to bear any weight, I'm sewing it directly to the layer below it. If this actually was holding up this whole um, cape, uh, this would be sewn to the cape, but I don't need to worry about that. Let that get sorted and then sew the centers together. And now we can do the cape. Yay, okay. So these last back pieces are going to become the cape, but I'm going to do it this way. So another way to do this is to, yeah, it'll honestly be faster. I was going to trace it, but I can just control CV. I'll just do it this way. It's actually easier. You can trace them using the I hotkey and then just select trace. But in this case, it's honestly easier just to do it like this. Because I'm not actually using these pattern pieces. But what I am doing is I'm, steal is I'm stealing, is I'm taking my shape this line here, and this is going to become the shape of that back. So I'm just lining them up um, where they would sew together. So I have as clean of a line as I, as I can. And then I'm just going to use the polygon tool and follow it and all of the exact points and using the curve lines if they exist. That's the other reason to utilize the curve points instead of bezier curves is if you're tracing something like this it does make it much easier to reference and get the exact same shape so here's that pattern it's not perfect but it doesn't have to be so right click unfold with symmetrical editing before we do anything we are going to sew this into place so we can see that it sews and fits 
it will be exact fit, which is what we want. Into the back, I will put it attached to this one. So which one did I select? Okay, so it's this one. I'm going to sew it to this upper piece, holding shift, going to the next one, because it will apply symmetrically. So right click this in the 3D window, superimpose over. Sometimes that works, sometimes that does not work. Come here, superimpose side. Side's a bit better. Still pulling that out. So now this is going to be the beginning of the giant cape that I envisioned in my dreams that I hope you guys did as well. Because this will now sew. Oh yeah, I should probably save my progress, huh? Murphy's Law is save your progress while you're doing this. Save as project. So this is a separate project. Uh, we already have the base dress. I don't know why I always have caps lock on. Save more often. I have my quick save at every three minutes uh, for my emergency saves. But it's up to you. Definitely manually save more often than uh, as you've seen me doing right now. Okay, so this is the beginning of that cape. Pull it out. I like this sewing length. So let's see. Uh, uh, 1505.9. Change length. 1505.9. On the start. Delete this point. Oh. Don't delete it, but do the right click align bottom okay so now it's the exact length of that sewing line so we're gonna go over here we have so many pieces make this base fabric these are all kind of going together I'm sorting them out together here and we're stretching you can do this a little bit but not entirely because I do want to also more evenly distribute it like this. Superimpose side. Sometimes this works, sometimes this doesn't. This most likely will not work. But what I will do, everything else is frozen, I will start applying those pleats again. So let me turn this actually into a curve point. Convert to curve point. I want those pleats again because I still want it to simulate properly and simulate really dense. So I'm going to remove uh, length editing across the center so I can do this. Right click both sides, offset align along a curve. It's great for along a curve, but it's also great for when you're doing, you know, 90 pleats density. I will now use the accordion pleat using the pleat fold tool accordion pleats using three uh, right click uh, I'm not gonna I'm gonna reset 3d arrangement sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't and strengthen and then I'm actually gonna help myself here by turning off gravity so I've right clicked in the 3d window and I've chosen gravity off or gravity value zero instead of negative 9800. And you'll see what happens when I do this. It's going to sew into the same place with these pieces. And I'm going to be doing that with these ones as well. So because I've strengthened it, it will make the pleats very, very severe and strong. Oh no. Is that a crisscross that I'm seeing? Make sure they're not crossing each other. Oh, <gasps> they are. Don't make sure, make sure that you don't do what I was about to do. And sew them to the front of each other. There we go. That would have been an absolute simulation nightmare. Okay. Now we can let it do it. should have frozen that top. I forgot.
but it's fine. Luckily, we are not having any issues with that. For now. And it is relatively slow again. I have everything in the scene. Okay, and now I will reactivate these guys. Once this gets out, get out of there. Be patient, unlike me. And this is flat, that's fine. I'll fix it in a minute. These are all gonna get merged, actually. Okay, lovely, beautiful. This is now getting frozen. And these ones are now going to activate. And we're going to do the same thing we did because the pleats will make it look really nice. It'll drape like it did in the beginning at the center front that we did earlier. Offset along a curve. We're going to do this one at 60. Then we're going to use the pleat fold tool again, selecting the direction. I'm keeping it at three. So there's one, two, three, yeah. up, down, up. Yeah. And it will also help the pleat settle into place. Again, I'm going to strengthen these because then it'll accordion closer, which is the opposite of what it, you would expect it to do, but it's because the pleats are there. Come out so you can see it. Let me move so you can see what it's doing. I'm done with that. get this out of her hand. So you can choose to pull it out or you can choose to use the um, select mesh tool. I could also increase her skin offset, but I don't think I really need to right now. Where are you? Okay. Come here, you. Come here. Because then I'm going to turn off the uh, strengthen. And it will balloon. But before we do that, I do want to use the B hotkey and merge these pieces together in my 2D window, which will then allow me to do, oh, interesting how it's not all the way at the end, but that's fine because that'll end up happening in a second because I just want to make trouble for everything. Because I want that train, right? I just want to cry, apparently. I just want to make so many issues. Convert to curve point. Convert to curve point. And convert to curve point. And I'm del deleting those curve points. So I get that big old train, but we can see it's a little angry today. I am testing fate right now. Okay, we're saving this project. Because I am this close, so once that's done, I probably will use the GPU simulation especially since I'm doing this now. So this is the last of it. Uh, da, da, da.
Okay. And then also selecting all of these. Right click, I'm, what I need to do is I need to fix those uh, points, my internal lines. So I'm locking all my pattern outlines. Selecting all of my lines. Right clicking, extend and trim to pattern outline. Oh, it's because I, yeah. And that's why I saved before I did that. If this doesn't work, I will just delete that and then redo along a curve. But I believe it'll do it. Normally this isn't a problem, but because I have so much in the scene, there we go. You gotta give, you gotta give your computer a little, you gotta, gotta, gotta give it a minute. You know, so I don't like doing GPU, but we're going to give it a try. I do not recommend doing GPU in this way, but it might actually work. Superimpose. Uh, I'm going to unfreeze. Not simulating. Because I don't want to deal with this whole collision issue. So we're going to go to... Reset, 3D arrangement. Yeah, it's all the way up here. This is the same that I had with that wedding veil. Get it as close as you can. Uh, looks like I gotta rotate it. Get it as close as you can. So that there's the least amount of whiplash. I could try to do the superimposed side, but I do not currently trust that it would do what it needs to do. Deactivate pattern and swing for that thing. And I will use GPU simulation using control H. I do not want this to have too many collision issues, which is the my, my concern with using the GPU simulation. But it will be faster. It'll give it a second to pick up, though. I have hit the simulation button. Because I don't want to deal with it collapsing in, into it. Because there's so much here. Oh, I like that it's going slow. That's nice. She says... It does probably help that her collision thickness on most of this garment is much higher than it would be normally. All right. Ugh. 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 This is everything I wanted. <laughs> okay. We'll reactivate this one. This is everything I could have dreamed for. Ah, there's only the one. Okay. 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 Now we're not doing that ever again. <laughs> okay. So. We'll CPU simulation this. Because then it's done. Because <laughs> see, it's very different. Simulation and GPU. Uh, GPU and CPU are very, very different beasts. CPU is far more accurate. Look at this absolute menace of a cape. Look at that thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm, yep. I definitely see that one, Rosemary. Okay. I can see it. it. It is too, a little too big. But you know, we're gonna leave it, we're gonna leave it. We're gonna leave it as is. This is not how I wanted it to look, but we're gonna, we're gonna keep it like that. We're, we're just gonna, we're gonna accept this into our lives. I'm going to turn off the internal lines as well. 
just so we can kind of enjoy it. Once that figures itself out, I shouldn't have done that. Then I can turn the colors back on. Because everything else is frozen. I would not simulate this. And this is all a 20 particle distance. I am think I'm gonna... I think, at n I think for dinner I'll let it simulate down to 5. We'll let this settle down and then we'll call it basically done. I'd almost like to move it behind her hands, but I still like it as it is. If her hands were at her sides, I'd move it behind her hands, but they're not at her sides, so I'm going to leave it like this. And then I will render it. Um, I really do need to make like pretty renders and like put them on ArtStation or, or the website or something. Because you guys really only see the thumbnail at the end. Because I do have to render it in our sister software, which I have an announcement about. Um, later. Do you want to check one thing? What are you doing? Okay, that's fine. So I'm going to freeze this guy, control K. I want to just bring this back out of the control A before I do anything else. Collision thickness should be 2.5. I'm going to bring these out of her torso. Simulate that. Let's settle back. Okay. Okay, I will, uh, I'll do one more thing. I need to make sure that my sewing line, you can see here it's kind of popping up, and I don't want that. I want this sewing line to be turned so that it'll lay flat. And then I will reduce the particle distance using subdivide along that line. Yes? Hi, honey. The cat agrees. Thank you, chicken. The cat agrees that this is the best way to go. Turn off simulation. Okay, come here. Make sure that it was all applied correctly. Okay, it's at turned. Okay, so I will use the select mesh brush. Size. I could do it in 3D, but here I think it's going to be a little easier. I'm just reducing the particle distance right here doesn't really have to be perfect, and I'll subdivide. And I'll give it a second. So we're almost there. It'll lay a little bit flatter if I do it this way. And that means I can keep the rest of this at 20 particle distance, which is great. And then I'll freeze it, and then I'll turn simulation off, and I'll bring all the colors back. And then it's basically ready for rendering, except for me bringing some more cleanup done. What? You want your, you want your treats, honey. So once we're there... It's making all of this 10 particle distance now, and it will affect how it simulates. So that's why it's taking a minute. 
and then we'll see it at the end. I guess it was thicker than I thought it was when I selected it. It's a pretty big subdivision. This isn't an error. It's just taking a while because there's so much in the scene. Um, it's chugging the computer. Yes. Very much so. Let's see. I said I was going to make this as busy as possible. Okay. Still going. Should have saved. It's still subdividing them because it's doing such a large space. I didn't realize it because relatively it's not. But yeah, should have just done the tiny one. I guess I made my brush too big. Next time, just do it on the edge, unlike what I just did. I just, I didn't realize or take into account how big the brush was. We'll see, because I want, we're this close, so I'm like, caught, caught, time sunk fallacy here. So we're going to see, hopefully this stays. I may just force it. You want to jump on my lap? Ooh. You want to help? Are you going to help us? No? Are you not going to help us? Okay. I will force close it. I did save very recently, so we're going to see where that went. I will not subdivide. I'm just going to finish it and make it pretty, and I will subdivide off screen. We'll see what the auto save did. The void cat is here. She's helping. Right, little lady? You gonna help us? Are you gonna help or are you just gonna judge? Because I'm not here for judging. Yes. Show me what the autosave has. Okay. That's not even the autosave that I want. Open, project, desktop, fantasy dress. Well, I guess that's the same autosave, isn't it? That's fine. Control J. Fast GPU. Make this full screen, please. <laughs> I hit the full screen button and it sends it to my third screen on like a smaller side. Can you not simulate off screen? That'd be super. Okay. Uh, reset 3D arrangement. Flippy flop. Yeah, sorry cat, I'm doing something. You wanted attention. You're not always gonna get it, honey. We're going to leave it as is, but I will make sure that before this goes in, it is at a turned angle. So we get to see GPU simulation again. Okay. Control H, GPU. Control K to freeze that one. And... We'll just simulate it back in place and then I'll uh, give you guys the color so at least you can see it at the end. And I will, I'll clean it up at the, I'll clean it up off screen. But as you saw, I'm also streaming at the same time. So take that into account. If you're doing all of this, don't also stream.
because it can cause uh, some issues. Uh, it's like it's ominously going into the torso. I don't know why it feels so ominous, but it really does. Okay. That was weird. Could I show how to make sleeves? Um, there is a tutorial on how to make sleeves in on our YouTube channel. Um, on how to drape sleeves. You saw me manipulate a lot of sleeves. If you've been here, or I don't know when you got here, uh, Grizz, but we are right at the end of our, our stream. Um, but we have tutorials on how to like drape draft in the draping tutorials, I believe. No, which one? Introduction series in the introduction series um, on how to drape. And you can use that to make a sleeve, a basic sleeve. Dropping silk chiffon. Okay, you just joined. Got it. Yeah, we just... We've been doing this for about two hours now, and I made two different... Three different kinds of sleeves from a base sleeve. Okay, so now we're simulating with chiffon as the value. And I'm going to turn off strengthening. But yeah, we've got some tutorials on how to do some sleeves from scratch, if that's what you want. But they're basic sleeves. Yeah, save right now. I'm not going to do that, that again, Rosemary. Control S to save. And make sure that you're saving the correct thing. Save. Absolutely. Thank you very much. So make sure you save. <laughs> and then I'm just going to do what I did a minute ago. We'll simulate this. I do want to pull, I want to pull the sleeves back over her hands, but I'm not going to do it. I may be tempted, but I will do that off screen so that you might enjoy it and not have to wait to see that. Okay. Control K. I'm unfreezing this so that you all can see it and nice and pretty. Okay. I'm not going to simulate again. So control A, control K. I'm going to turn off the internal lines just so we can see it pretty. Uh, for fabric one, it will now look like velvet just because I really like it. It's so shiny and pretty. Okay, fabric two, I've been having a problem with you. I wanna see what it looks like as leather. It's not very shiny as leather. We're gonna just look at one window and it's gonna be the finished window. So you guys all have positioning it so you can see it okay so I don't like leather I do like silk satin but obviously you can make it a different color but here is the finished piece this is not rendered whatsoever this may say quality render 3d window it is not a finished render there's no lighting we just have what is here can make it look like velvet. I don't know. Do we like shiny or do we like the velvet? Thank you. We designed it. So this is the second half uh, Grizz of the stream that we did last time. So we made the dress first and then we worked on the sleeves. As you can see, there's a little pickup here. And we have all of this pleated going on here so you can at least still see the back this time and if this was to animate it would take a lot of time I do not encourage anyone to potentially try to animate something like this I like the velvet too I think we stick with the velvet 
and then like the chiffon over it. I almost want her to have, like, you can see the gold pieces here. They're not actually gold. Let me turn turn it off. I almost want her to have gold trim now, though. Uh, let's see. Show bonding. Okay. I almost want her to have the gold trim, but I don't want her to have the gold trim at the same time. Because it looks like, it looks like it looks nice. Like, I don't know. But there it is, uh, if you guys have decided on the sleeves and the little uh, scallops on it. This would be impossible to walk in, but it is beautiful to stand. So uh, I think I have the announcement now. Let me see. Um, so the announcement I have is for our sister software, uh, Clo 3D. So, uh, for those of you, can I hide? Oh, yeah, I'll hide this after that. Just need to remember where. There. Hide it. So pretty. It's not even rendered. Uh, for those of you who are in our Discord channel, I will share the announcement there. For those of you who are in, our dis are in the Marvelous Designer Discord channel, Clo has finally made their own Discord channel, an official Discord channel for Clo. So, um... Let me find the copy link. I will share the link in the, the Discord chat. This link is for the finished. Sorry. This link is for the Clo official Discord channel. So if you are a Clo user, not a Marvelous Designer user, this is for the Clo users for specifically the fashion industry. I know that a lot of our users from in our Discord channel are specifically Clo just because they prefer discord over a forum this is the discord channel for the clo server let me share our links now now that we're at the end here so that's for the clo server this link is for clo 3d is very different from marvelous designer this link is for the marvelous designer discord server so if you like what you see here, if you don't have, if you don't want to make real life patterns, if you want to stay working in 3D, if you're working in the VFX video game industry, you're going to want to use Marvelous Designer. And here's the Marvelous Designer Discord. Um, for those of you who want, a, who want a link to our website to purchase the Marvelous Designer software, here is a link to MarvelousDesigner.com. Um, for the difference between Clo, to summarize the difference between Clo and Marvelous Designer is Clo 3D is meant for the fashion industry. You can bring in your own existing DXF patterns, your own vector patterns. Marvelous Designer, you cannot. Clo 3D, you can create, a, you can create bill of materials. You can create, um, sewing instructions. You can create, um, colorways and technical packages. Marvelous Designer. If you're working in CG making video games, you don't need that. What you want in Marvelous Designer is you want retopology. You want sculpting options. Those are in Marvelous Designer. And most of the time, like I say, we don't have a, rending, a rendering option. Most people don't want to pay for a rendering option if they're going to already bring it into Maya, into um, C4D. So um, that that's the other thing. Clo does have V-Ray, but uh, if you don't want to if you don't want that you would use marvelous designer so clo 3d is going to be for real life real world fashion um creation of pattern making or pattern manipulation and pattern fit whereas marvelous designer is where you're going to be creating really fun things you saw here i didn't really care about how this structurally functions i don't need to worry about that so i can just do what i want have fun with it make something pretty clo 3d it's far more um, realistic based, like not realistic based, but you're going to be wanting to check your assets. You're going to be wanting to check how it fits and comfort. They're very different needs, but they're similar, very similar software packages. And for those of you, I'm grabbing double of these, showing these again, even though they are in the description of the video, um, I'm sharing our YouTube channel. For those of you who are on Twitch, we do let our Twitch um, videos expire. So 
go to our YouTube channel. This video will be there in perpetuity. I'll try to make a nice pretty render. It's not going to be guaranteed to happen tonight because you see how thick this is and dense this is. And for those of you who are brand new to Marvelous Designer, who don't have pattern making experience, um, here's a link as well to our beginner tutorials where you can learn how to make a sleeve, for example, how to make some, a basic t-shirt from scratch. And as you saw, I made this from a basic t-shirt, just a basic t-shirt with like a v-neck. Um, all I really needed was the sleeves and the, the shirt part. And last but not least, uh, I keep hitting that Windows key. A link here is to the just the support tab on our website. If you're having technical difficulties with the software, if you're having um, issues with like something that might be a bug, if you if you need to log yourself out of your other computer because you want to start it on this other computer, that's where you would kind of submit a support ticket. Say, hey, can you? Can you log me out of my other computer? I left it at home or something like that. So you would go there for the support ticket. But again, you can see, we'll do the pattern. I'll show you the patterns again. <laughs> There's so, it's so, okay. So this is my, uh, my, my UV window isn't the prettiest right now, but it's, it's fine. You guys don't care. I'm going to unlock all my pattern outlines. Your 2D window is your UV window, and my, my window isn't the prettiest at the moment. Can I lock uh, internal lines and then just move my patterns? Oh, thank you. So as you can see here, while I'm doing a little bit of a cleanup, here's just that front skirt. Here are those fun sleeves. Here's the cape. You could change all of these around if you really wanted, but you don't have to. I would still recommend cleaning this up for uh, your actual UVs. Because these would be grouped together. So on and so forth. Like materials. But that is it for this stream. Thank you all so much for joining us. This will be immediately available to watch as soon as I uh, hit the, the end button. And then feel free, again, I'll, I'll link our official Discord server because um, we stream every other Wednesday. We might start streaming more often. Here's a link to our Discord server again. Um, I will open up another thread immediately after this for what you guys want to vote for to see next time. So I will see you all in the Discord server. Thank you all so much again for joining us, and I will render this.